Welcome to the Final Hour podcast coming to you from the original Living Word Christian Center out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And you're just watching because you thought we were going to be in tank tops. What gotcha. a disappointment that you're not. Gotcha! Hey, <laughs> you only have to tune in for three seconds before we catch you as view, technically. So, Way to go. You we'll really see. got some people. We'll see if it... We'll see if the numbers went up, if the numbers went down. Um, stay, stay tuned, though, because there's lots coming that you want to be a part of. We, we were allowed to say we're just kidding, right? We're just kidding? We didn't just lie. We were, just we were kidding, kidding around. Yes, uh, you are allowed to say that. Yes, and I want to thank you if you are a subscriber. And if you have not subscribed and you, and you watch on a regular basis, please help us and subscribe. Um, we looked up the countries. Um, Can I say something about our subscribers? We're almost to 2,000 on almost, YouTube. Almost. Just, I think we're less than 10 away. Yeah. Yeah. So we are climbing because I feel like just a month, two couple months ago, we were at 1750, right? Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah, that's correct. Middle of the summer. Well, thank you, Lord, for that. Praise the Lord. Yep. Praise the thank Lord. Thank you to our 2,000 subscribers. And you are in my prayers every day, seriously. Um, and... You can do that. You can pray over the viewers, listeners, subscribers of the Final Hour podcast like Paul does the church at Ephesus. He doesn't mention all their names personally, but he prays for the church at Ephesus, and they're all covered. I do it the same way with you. And so also our countries, these countries that uh, people tune, tune in from, uh, thank you from all over the world, Canada, Guatemala, uh, Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom, India, Ireland, uh, South Africa, Norway, Netherlands, Romania, Costa Rica, Indonesia, Spain, Mexico, Germany, Jamaica, Malaysia, the Ukraine, Poland, France, Singapore, Philippines, Israel, Italy, Switzerland, Sweden, Denmark, Fiji, Taiwan, Puerto Rico, Greece, Serbia, Finland, Brazil, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Belgium, Belize, Slovakia, United Arab Emirates, Kenya, Iceland, Senegal, Japan, the wow. Kingdom of Jordan, Qatar, Latvia, Turkey, Vietnam, Egypt, and Argentina. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, especially the, the subscribers from those countries. We appreciate you listening. Yep. Um, last week, we talked about uh, Africa, the all the coups. Mm -hmm. Over there, change of governments, um, right. mostly through violent means, a, a coup happens. But the latest one being in Niger, how the Russian mercenary group, it's spelled Wagner, <clears throat> but, Wagner. Pro but pronounced Wagner. It's Putin's private army was behind the coup in Niger. And we talked a lot about the Middle East, what's behind all the chaos in Israel. We connected the changes in these governments in Africa, um, <clears throat> how they will disrupt the energy supply and the uranium supply into Europe. The Russians being behind a lot of this using the Wagner Group, whose uh, leader just died in a plane crash. Mm -hmm. um, Oppos supposedly. Yes. I'm, I'm not necessarily buying it right now. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting timing. He was, he was uh, clashing with Putin. Um, oh. Yes. Uh, that, was, that was on the it regular was, news. It was part he was of, clashing. Part yes. of what was going on. Yes. Um, yeah, they, I mean, he was leading some people towards Moscow. At one point. At one they point. They thought he was going to invade Moscow. Yeah. I'm surprised Did you missed that. I don't even know about this group. Look, started to talk. Well, a little bit about this. This is group, Putin's but. little private army, yeah. estimated at 50,000 strong. But think if you know you have the best of the best and you are that guy, why wouldn't you try and go against Putin if you thought these guys would fall on you? You could go against them. Yeah. I just don't think he has the numbers. Yeah. But but he's he's maybe he did. He's got the, uh, the Wagner group in multiple places um around the world even though they just lost their leader we talked about libya niger ukraine mm -hmm. he's got them on the border of poland yep. remember we talked about how 90 percent of the african countries are now allied with russia and china i believe we had pictures of the latest conference of putin meeting mm -hmm. with all those um 
African leaders last week. We had pictures up of him, Putin, with the majority um, of the heads of state of the African con continent um, on last week's episode in mm -hmm. the in the more section. Just go down into the more. Yeah. Um, it's where we kind of have our notes, where we where we find all these articles. That's where we put all our sources. Um, yeah. You've got the Saudis, the Iraqis doing major business with Russia and China. If you want more information of all these things that we're trying to connect here, you really need to look, take a look back at last week's episode. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to say really mm -hmm. without the American people paying attention or noticing America is losing influence in a lot of the world, yeah. and we're losing that influence to China and Russia. Mm -hmm. And so our media is feeding us all kinds of things every day. CBS, NBC, ABC, MSNBC, CNN, and the vaunted Fox News. Um, who? What are they telling us every day? Putin's finished. He's crazy. Ukrainians are winning. And I don't know how much you guys know, but the... The United States of America as a country, our credit rating has been downgraded. Multiple times now. Yes. Yep. We have more debt per citizen um, than probably any country in the world. Yes. Huh. You never hear this though, right? No. No. no they're not going to tell you that. <clears throat> Excuse me. The average person that pays taxes owes a quarter of a million dollars in debt. Okay, that's just your average American. On paper, even though we live good, the average American that pays taxes being a quarter of a million dollars in debt per person, we are the poorest people in the world. Mm -hmm. But we don't see that the benefits of being poor yet because we do everything on credit, right? We're, we're still getting things on credit. Yep. And so the United States of America per person owes more money than any other person, any other country in the world. Just a quick run of the numbers. It's, I mean, it's just shy of a million per person as far as the, the, the national debt goes, the 32 trillion yeah. divided by 330 million uh, people in America, more, to, more or less, it's just under a million dollars per person in debt. Right. And I just think that's probably because some are, are way more, mm -hmm. um, oh, way more than others. But your average taxpaying American is, is people like you and me owe a quarter million bucks. And the media will, will always show you what they want you to see. Yeah. And they want you to think about and what they want you to talk about. Mm -hmm. Never before in the history of the world have you had this many global things happening throughout the world at the same time. This has never happened. It, it was never possible to happen. Right. In this world we live in, technology has made it a small world. In moments, we can know what yeah. happens in Africa, yep. Eastern Europe, the Middle East. And so I'm just reminding you that uh, uh, all our military fought for in Iraq, we got nothing. We got nothing out of that. The, mil the billions of dollars that the American public poured into Iraq – we, 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 we don't even get oil from Iraq. Mm -mm. Um, are you aware of that? We get no oil from Iraq. We just surrendered $80 billion worth of military equipment to the Taliban in Afghanistan. Just, just gave it away. No one's asking any questions. You, you never hear about this, of course, from our vaunted news outlets. Uh, but when we abandoned Afghanistan, we not only gave them hundreds of millions of um, um, we, we gave them $1.1 billion in cash, right? Think about that. They, you can see the, the pictures of the cash were, were, were on social media. Yeah, they were recording it. The Taliban yeah. sent us videos. Look what your government gave us. Our enemies. Mm -hmm. $80 billion in military equipment to make them the 26th strongest military in the world. And so we gave up the largest concentration of lithium in the world when we pulled out of Afghanistan. Lithium is uh, it's an extremely highly valuable commodity. What is it used for? Rechargeable batteries for your iPhone, laptops, di digital cameras, electric vehicles, 
Oh. Lithium is is used in some rechargeable batter, batteries for things like pacemakers for the heart, toys, clocks. Well, guess who who owns that now? China. They just mm -hmm. moved in there. They didn't make a deal. They just told the Taliban, "We're take we're controlling your lithium." Hmm. And so we gave that up. I believe this is all part of prophecy. Yep. In this respect, the United States has to be weakened to the point where they are not able to intervene in the Ezekiel 38 war. Yeah. If you want to know about the Ezekiel 38 war, um, you can see that in our second or third episode. Um, I think that United States has to be weakened to a point where prophecy is fulfilled and the globalists get their one world government. Yeah. And their goal is 2030. Right, we'll owe yep. nothing and yep. be happy. Yep. You you start hearing more and more about the the initiative from a lot of different sources because they're like, oh yeah, well, this is this is going on because of the initiative twenty thirty three or twenty thirty. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah, it it is more <laughs> it is more active than anyone would know, uh, and people are in place to enact it more than anyone yeah. would know. Experts. Um, from Google, all of it, chat GPT, all of it have said we will be uh, hybrid humans uh, by 2030. In other words, everyone in the world will have some type of technology in them that assists them in their lives. And I would be shocked if we were not gone. By that time. Yes. It would make sense. And so um, all I'm telling you is, is you understand the Bible, there's, there's, um, there's nothing that tomorrow's news is going to announce to you that's going to surprise you if you understand the Bible. Everything has to be pointed in the end to a one world government. Yep. The reason I'm, uh, I'm saying here in the United States, let's fight for our freedom. Absolutely. Right. Because I believe we can have a choice before we go in the rapture that we have a choice. I believe that, that we in America and the body of Christ around the world um, are supposed to go out on top yep. as a glorious church, winning souls, walking in the latter rain, like you would call the book of Acts, um, you know, walking victoriously when the rapture comes. Are we doing that or are we hiding yeah. In our houses, limping along, letting these idiots roll over us with a bunch of lies and deceit. Well, and I, I don't think there's any country collectively that has done more to propel the, the gospel into all the world than, than America, at least in the last, you know, 200, 300 years, at least, you know, with the ability to have uh, freedom of religion you know, I I think I think the enemy has to neutralize America because America is still the the American Church uh, for all of its faults, all of its uh, downfalls, is still the biggest supporter of missions and souls soul winning and church planning in all the world. I believe it's up to us. Yeah. Um, the 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 Western body of Christ has more knowledge than the church has ever had. Is Jesus going to come back for a glorious church, a victorious church, or is he going to come back for a church that's falling apart, battered and ignorant yeah. and not even really looking for him? You know, last week we looked a little bit at how it's not coincidental that in Israel they were prosecuting uh, a few years ago their, their prime minister. Um, and so, and Trump is being accused right now of conspiracy to defraud the United States Conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. Obstruction of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding. <laughs> wow. Yeah, these are the charges. The, these are oh, the charges. Conspiracy Man. against rights. Hmm. Oh. Well, this is the same kind of thing that, that went on in Israel, the same playbook. We're talking about the same spirit, the same agenda, right. the same methods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. With the globalist uh, being behind it, what what they're doing is they're trying to cancel the will of the majority. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're trying to make the majority get used to the fact and accept the fact that something higher than we the people exists. All right? That's what they want. Right. What happened with Netanyahu in Israel in regards to the actual trial, the Israeli prime minister, when he was prime minister before, and then they then then he had to go to trial, it exposed a lot in regards to these evil people. Yeah. Trying to bring him down. And that's how he wound up voted back into the office. He wound up, it didn't work. I feel like something like that is happening in the American public school system, which, you know, is really skewed. And and if you've been following things for the the last 20, 30 years, the American, uh, the education system in total, post-secondary, high school, junior high, even elementary, has been a hotbed for... Um, alternative lifestyle, uh, you know, saying that the, these things are good. It's like the gateway to get a generation swayed to a specific belief system. And uh, I feel like it's starting to come to a head in a similar way that either the education system is going to be blown up and and, and have to recognize that this is not the way to uh, help America grow, or... Uh, the public school system is just going to have to implode because people are going to leave it by the droves well, or in droves. Um, what they did in Israel, they learned from, from Netanyahu. The difference with our ex-president mm-hmm. compared to the Israeli prime minister is they got smarter. They waited two and a half years. They used the media to vilify, vilify, vilify him. See, with Netanyahu, they tried to prosecute him. Just immediately. Immediately coming out of office. Yeah. All right. With Trump, they waited until the campaign season starts to begin. Mm-hmm. And then they then they try to prosecute. And I'm not here. I'm not supporting one political party or another. I think <laughs> they're so messed up. And really what this is doing is it's using the they media. Are. Yeah. Is, is causing the general public to line up with what they want us to think and how they want us to think. I mean, we brought this up last week. Think about this. This is how messed up it is. You have a $900 looting limit. (laughs) In California. Yeah. Okay. In the West Coast, also in the big cities. Yeah. In the East, I'm hearing. Okay. I think if I backslid. And fell away from God. Mm-hmm. I would move out west and become just a professional looter. Make money, make bank. Yeah, you just hit four stores a day. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Nine hundred limit. You think right. they're just stopping there? Don't Nine have times to break four. Into people's houses. You can make thirty oh, yeah. six hundred dollars a day looting. Just go to Target, Walgreens. Go, go throw it all on uh, Amazon or or eBay. Craigslist or Facebook and say, hey, you know, buy this TV at this price. Buy, I mean, buy the, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course. Think about this. Looting is legal. You can't. You can't tell me um, that that that's that's not confusion. If it's not stopped that's by the deception. law, it's, it's not. not illegal. If well, if the law the- says that you can't be prosecuted for under nine hundred dollars, that is in legal. of itself makes it legal. You don't think there's people going to four of these places right. a day taking eight well, fifty a day I'm out of stores? No, I completely agree. You I'm just, just go saying. To a mall and you hit a bunch of stores if, at one if, time. If the laws do not apply anymore, then then it is complete chaos, and that is, I mean, it's what they want. It's insane. It's insane. But that's it. Is some people say no? It's not legal. No. If if it was if it was illegal, then it wouldn't be. Uh, it would be prosecuted. What, by what's the law. their excuse for making looting legal? Do you know what I think it's it great, was? I don't I think, know. Because they feel bad for the people? I feel like, well, that, I don't know. Looting? I feel like it's a part of, because so many people push back against defund the police, that this is their way to get police to stop reacting to situations where then police presence gets removed automatically because yeah. it's okay. legal. Why are you going to show up? That makes sense. Second Timothy 3. That, oh. it, it makes sense. Second Timothy 3. One, understand that in the last days will we'll set in. Set in, come, 
dangerous, perilous times. Perilous means dangerous. Of great stress and trouble. What does trouble mean? Hard to deal with. Hard to bear. I think if I'm a store owner and I've got to let someone come in and walk out with $850 worth of things. I mean, these the whole world is, is watching what is going on in this country. And I'm not just talking about Joe Biden. Uh, the guy leading our country, he, he's, he's an embarrassment, right? He, he's a complete embarrassment. I cringe, you know, thinking, can he make it from his office to his plane? Well, when he's not right? on vacation, did you read that he has like 372 days of vacation so far? That's over 40% of his time is spent on vacation. Okay, look at the minority Republican leader in the Senate. What's his name? Mitch McConnell? Mitch Senior Turtle. I mean, you know, the only time I see Mitch McConnell is shots of him. And, uh, did you see him the, the other last, day when he... The last like, time that he spoke, had a, he had a, a mental... It, it yes. looked like he was having a stroke. I, I don't know off. if he did. I don't know either. But no, yeah, he, just, couldn't, he couldn't finish his These are the guys leading the country. And that, that looks like a stroke. That is so embarrassing. Yeah. All right? I mean, we're talking about the leaders yeah. of the free world. Yeah. You can't tell me this is deception and confusion. L- sure. Listen, because of this lack of leadership, this will open the doors to the Antichrist. The Antichrist, would it, he could step right now into the scene if he has the answers. The Bible talks about the Antichrist who nobody really knows, and he rises up out of a 10-nation confederation, which some commentators call the Revised Roman Empire. Many, many Bible scholars believe that's a, 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 a that European Union. Mm-hmm. The Ten Nation Confederation will be led by ten kings, the Bible says in Daniel. Out of those ten guys, we'll raise an eleventh horn. Um, some commentators believe he's a separate guy from those ten. Some commentators believe he's one of the leaders of the ten. We know we've got we've, we or he comes out of these these ten nations. Right. We know that for sure. Yeah. We know we've gone over this. The Antichrist rises out of the revised Roman Empire. If you want to know where he rises from, look at all the territory Rome held at its high point. He's coming. The according to the Bible, he's coming from one of those nations today. Mm-hmm. How that translates into the day, many prophecy experts believe the future EU is that ten nation confederation. He puts down three of these leaders, whether if it's through war, deceit, bribery, blackmail, he gets them to capitulate their countries to him. Yeah. The other seven of the 10 nation confederation give him, they say, take it out of fear. They fear him. And sometimes you have to hear things multiple times to get it into you. Mm -hmm. Right. And so this is all in the Bible. And, and from that point, he deceives the world through prosperity and peace. Generally, people are going to fall f- for, for that because people just want to live in peace. Uh-huh. Right. They just want to be able to do what they want to do and live in peace. I mean, really, that's, let's just check it out. That's what they want, right? If they think they can get that. They'll go that direction. Slowly, our nation is turning into a bunch of people that are satisfied with just a little money and just to exist. Right. Just give me a little money, enough to exist, right? Um, We are sitting ducks for a totalitarian leader. Yeah. Right now, we are. Right. Look at, we're trying to connect you. Middle East, Israel, chaos. Yeah. Definitely. Right? Africa, all the coups, changes of governments. Um, most of them are allied. Nine out of ten of those countries are allied with, with Russia and China. The weakness of the United States of America mm-hmm. to the point where we're saying, okay, you can, you can, you can steal, but you can only steal $850 right. worth of stuff. So that th- those guys can't stop them, those store owners? No, they're not allowed to. A store owner just did, and they arrested. Or yep. they said they're going to prosecute him with right. assault and battery. It wouldn't, Doesn't that wouldn't just work make as you well mad? in the Midwest? The Midwest, you have uh, 
Yeah, it's, ability. it's not here. I think in the Midwest, uh, if you're stopped by that, it's because of corporate policies, not necessarily the... Well, Lulu, they don't, they won't stop you. That's a corporate policy. Right. That's, that's not the but ability Lulu's to... They just don't want to be... Left. They won't... Yeah, yeah, they are. Lululemon. Yep. You look at the COVID thing. What did we do? We gave up our Everybody freedom said, for safety. He said, oh, two weeks? We can give you two weeks. Yeah. Flatten they, the curve. They took... Years. We gave we up that. our freedom yeah. for safety. Yeah. That's what we thought we were doing. What's safety? You think the world is safer now than right. it was before COVID? <clears throat> yeah. Now they're they're rolling out another virus? What is it called? They're, they're warning you. Uh, yes. Here it comes. Eris. Wonder where that came from. What lab? Yeah, you guys go sit in your house. Mm -hmm. Don't go anywhere. You're not allowed to. And you know we'll 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 take away your constitution, and you can trust us to keep you safe. I'd like to say so. You know, I I send Linnea it's lots coming. of it's things. In Is it? It's in the news part. So wait. I, okay, listen. I'll save it. Save it. Daniel, um, the, who, who's turned into, um, we get a lot of information from one of our viewers. Daniel. And I've read this before, but what a great take. Okay, we're, we're, looking, we're looking down the barrel of another COVID type thing, right? Mm -hmm. that's Supposedly. They, that's what they're, – it's not they're a saying new September, virus. September, October-ish. It's, yeah. it, it's seeping in from social media yeah. Yeah. things. But and, they want things to be leaked, but, so yeah. this is – Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm controls. saying. They're, and it's interesting. The Greek god. Can, we, there was can. a Greek Go god ahead, by the name of Eris. What's Eris? Yeah. Eris, yeah, it's well. It was Eris mean? Is uh, it means strife. Uh -huh. My my wife, uh -huh. she heard we we were talking about this at home, yeah. and she looked it up, and she's like, Eris is is Greek for strife. That's the uh -huh. new strain of. And he was a god. That's the new strain. Yeah. yeah. So, not surprising, and I think it is, it is going to have to be, uh, something that people stand up for. Last last night there were a bunch of people in Huntington Beach, California. Governor, uh, Governor Newsom, Governor Gavin Newsom, uh, said that there's a 10 p.m. Uh, uh, curfew for for California last night. Why? Why? I don't know. He, they're starting it, but Hollywood was, Lionsgate was the first yeah. one to say mandatory masks yep. on Monday. So and Huntington Beach had a massive Stupid. turnout of we're not going to do it. So they, it was a oh, massive, good. peaceful protest. Good. People but, in the streets, people in their cars honking. But, but you Do know you their remember? answer to that? Yeah. Here's Locking how they down. answer that. They bring in Antifa. Right. Yeah. And they bring in Antifa. And make it and look like turn it into guys. chaos. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. That's their answer. You, if you think just right. because we're going to all get together and, right. and go sit in the streets. Right. Well, right? No, they're going to bring violence. Absolutely. And, and it and, delegitimizes yes, the but, pace, the peaceful protest. But that it. doesn't mean, and then blame it on, and then, then blame it on the ones that are protesting. The, the but that doesn't mean you don't, you don't protest. That doesn't mean that. And, but Daniel, yeah, sorry, he says, sorry, my tinfoil hat must have fallen <laughs> off. <laughs> but the info in the article is correct. Several banks have failed yeah. and more projected to below is my theory. Okay. This is deep. This is deep. And we're just Bring trying to get you to think. Bring it. This is happening in other nations as well. The mm -hmm. problem with these banks failing is more between the lines. It yep. is a way for the CBDCs to take over and be the norm. What's that? Digital currency, correct? Yes. So when you hear me say CBDC, just think digital currency. I think I sent an article about Nigeria and how they essentially crashed their current banking system on purpose to force people – to take the digital currency. Nigeria did it. When the smaller banks or even larger banks fail and people pull their deposits, it causes a recession or has occurred a depression. It has also occurred before. However, if they conveniently have the Fed backed with a hyped up in value digital currency to take over and save the system, they will be able to overt the crisis altogether. Yeah. However, they need a week or two. Here's the key. This is why he thinks this is why we're, we're going to have that lockdown, the coming lockdown. 
that that um, that is where this this new strain of COVID will come in because they need a week or two of no movement right. to do this. All right. Yep. To switch to everything to digital. All right. That is where the new strain of COVID will come in a way to keep people in while the changes are made. This is exactly what they need. It will probably be urged by the World Health Organization and enforced by the United Nations. But my prediction is by November, we will be being forced to buy our turkeys and Black Friday shopping with digital currency. Right. They will pay out our current digital currency insured money. Mm. With the new American digital currency backed right. by the world banks. Well, John, you <clears throat> sent me a video of Ch that girl in China yeah. who didn't have a digital ID. Yep. Wasn't going to use digital currency. She couldn't buy anything. She couldn't, couldn't buy a single thing. Mm -mm. It's also important to, to point out that we talked about this earlier this year when uh, the governor from South Dakota and the governor from yeah. Texas and I believe Florida uh, removed any provisions yes, for right. uh, current uh, digital currency being being available for, as the as the fed or the reserve for their states they said that's we're not going to we're not going to mess with that but a bunch of the other states had those same uh, proposals and i think minnesota was one of them sure. where of they just we'll pushed it right through happily. yeah and but but and listen. no one's talking about it no no of course not it's not on the news. No. Just the new strain is on the They only tell news. you what they want you to hear. Oh, man. We're going to wake up with this, right? With this coming uh, virus. This is what Daniel says. If you didn't understand what I just said, he's a little, he's, he's sometimes ahead of us a lot of times. And he's doing what good. he's saying is they need that lockdown. They need this heiress coming COVID heiress yep. lockdown to make this change. Or get for the digital currency to get major traction. This yeah. is what they need. And so, listen, the very, this is the very beginning of a totalitarian type movement is when America is willing to say, okay, we'll go back into our houses Not for gonna. you. We'll go back into our houses. I didn't do that the first I will time. Peacefully and hide. Peacefully. But uh, not do that. See, the Bible says the Antichrist is going to have the answers. Right. Who knows? Maybe the Antichrist rebels against this stuff. Maybe. Wouldn't that be genius oh, of the man. devil? Wouldn't it? To have to bring in a guy yeah. that rebels against all this stuff? Absolutely. And has all the answers? Yeah. I don't know how he does it, but it's mass deception. Yep. And I know that the Antichrist will be using AI. The Antichrist is going to have demonic powers of deception. Think about it. In military warfare, uh, if you've got the edge of deception, it's huge. It's huge. Read The Art of War. Have you ever heard of the book, The Art of War? Sun Tzu. So much. He writes about deception. If you can deceive your enemy. And, and you know... You, if, if you, in this case, if you can get your opponent to think they're not even at war. Right. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And, you know, the globalist, uh, John's friend, Klaus Schwab. Yes. <clears throat> We've been wanting to talk up to you. China. <laughs> China. The globalists. China. The, the, they're, they're just saying, let's help. Let, we don't have to do anything here. You know, we'll just take away their allies. And, you know, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, right? Um, How can they bear to stand if they're all alone? Yeah, they're destroying themselves. They'll destroy themselves and they'll be happy about it. We, we don't need to go to war with America. Let's watch the American media do our work. This is what Completely. China, Russia, Iran, because those Americans believe their media. So let's let their medium sucker them. You know, what's crazy is the point we're trying to make is last week. Is it's the same with Israel. Mm -hmm. Let's let Israel. Now they're all sitting back. Let's let them tear themselves apart from the inside. Yeah. We don't need to do anything. Who, you know, who makes looting a law, right? And, and who says, let's let them take, not, I just can't get over that, $900 worth of stuff. How rich could you get? That's, that's chaos. Yeah. Okay. That's chaos. Yeah. And that's, that's anarchy. That's deception. Yeah. When and that's that's making anarchy in essence a law. Yeah, exactly. Right. 
right? And so I would just not be surprised if the rapture is much closer than we think. Mm. It's prime time for some dude to step in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I mean, and, and that's what we've been trying to tell you. Okay, look at look at Africa. Look at the government changes. Look at the Middle East. Look at what's going on in Israel. It's very similar to what's going on in the United States of America. Probably the two freest nations in the world. Yeah. If you're talking capitalism, um, we can sh for sure say the Bible is right when, when we can point to all the deception, all the confusion, uh, huge amounts of deception and confusion. Mm -hmm. Look at the gender confusion. All right. That's mm -hmm. demonic. Right? Yeah. Speaking of this, think about this. This is another. We're at the end here. Revelation 11, 18, 11 through 13. This is the end of the tribulation and all the, the, the blood drinking businessmen, right. right, are crying. All right. They're crying. They're saying, they're saying they weep and grieve over, over it because no one can, they can't, they have no more merchandise. It's all over. This is the end of the tribulation. Their merchandise is gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, all kinds of scented wood, all sorts of ivory, varieties of objects, costly woods, bronze, iron, marble, cinnamon, spices, incense, ointment, perfume, frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, conveyances, and slaves. The bodies <sighs> and souls of men. You know what it's saying? All right, this is this is a sign of the end yep. when the souls of men become merchandise. Isn't it interesting? He's talking about the yeah. merchandise. This right. is towards the end of the tribulation, right. and all those creepy blood drinking businessmen, right? Epstein Island, all that crying over all the merchandise, and it's talking about the souls of men are merchandise. Wow! Doesn't that seem like it right is. now? It's getting there. It is getting there. Isn't human trafficking the biggest business in the world? Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? America is the biggest human trafficker in the world. They're re-engineering people, changing their genders, selling souls as merchandise, trafficking people. Think about all this. You know... They're trying to get you hard with legislation around the country for it to be legal for them to medically molest your child. Yeah. And you be okay with it. And if you're not, you're going to jail. You're blind if you don't see this. And we're not saying this is, you're saying this isn't deceptive. This isn't, you're saying this isn't mass deception. I'm just trying to convince you the Antichrist could pop tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. In this environment. And I don't know how many of you guys ever have heard this, but there is a big dispute among commentators, scholars, prophecy experts about how long is the period of time, if any, between the rapture happening right. and the tribulation beginning. Right. And we may only get through four verses. Uh, well, you know, I pulled this out of when I was preaching Revelation chapter six, and because this is what I, I did on a Sunday, a piece of it. And I'm going to put this, uh, you know, God had, the, you know, the feast days. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, God gave the Jews seven feast days, right? To be observed forever. Mm -hmm. So let's just take a look at these because it plays into this theory. Many people think there's going to be three years between the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation. Yeah. Huh. It gives the, if you believe Babylon is going to be rebuilt, mm -hmm. if you're one of those guys, it gives that, the tribulation temple, Yep. all that, it gives it a chance to happen, right? Right. If that doesn't happen in the next three years. If there's in any time between the rapture and the tribulation, all right, now listen to this. They're going over these feast days. Number one. Jesus was crucified on Passover. Yes. First feast day. Yep. Number two, Jesus was in the grave on unleavened bread. Second feast day. Yep. Feast of unleavened bread. Number three, Jesus rose from the dead 
on first fruits. Okay? He rose from the dead on first fruits. See, you see where I'm getting at? Yep. Third feast day. Okay? The church began on Pentecost. Fourth feast day. All right? There's a reason to believe the church will be raptured yeah. on trumpets. Yep. Which makes sense because... I guarantee... <laughs> The trumpet sound. Uh, the trumpet. I almost guarantee it. Fifth feast day. Yeah. It's going to happen. It Start is. paying attention. Every year, feast of trumpets. Look, you, you can say, you cannot know the day. You can right. know the season. Right. Okay? Well, Fifth feast day. I think uh, I, was, I was reading something the other day that um, a lot of those feasts can't be, can't be announced or even calculated until the moon that day... Wow is seen in Israel, mm. right? Huh. So, I, and I, I don't know all of this, but this is what I was reading. So if, uh, if, if the moon has not been seen, you know, the new moon, they, the, the feast doesn't start. That day is not announced until that happens. So you can't, you can't know. And even if uh, I know a lot of, a lot of people have advanced to uh, just calculating and, but the, the the people the true uh, believers in in that Jewish calendar they say only if it's seen in Israel that's oh. when they'll actually because some of the calculating uh, calendars and the people who do it in person and say it has to be seen physically uh, they're not all the same but this year the Feast of Trumpets and um, the actual calculated Feast of Trumpets it's it's happening at the same time. Well, wouldn't that be great if it was this fall, huh? I don't That'd know. That'd be great. Feast of Trumpets. Look, you get what I'm saying. Number one, Jesus was crucified on the first feast day, Passover. Number two, Jesus was in the grave on the second feast day, unleavened bread. Number three, Jesus rose from the dead on first fruits. That's the third feast day. Number four, the church began Pentecost on the fourth feast day. Hmm. Okay? On Pentecost. Number five, there is reason to believe the church will be. I know the church is going to be raptured on trumpets. Matter of fact, look up a series I did, seven messages on uh, signs, signs, prophecies, and events of the end times. Yeah. I did a whole sermon on why it's on the Feast of Trumpets. All right. Number six, there is reason to believe the second coming at the end of the tribulation, the Armageddon will end on the atonement. Sixth. Feast day. Mm. Number seven, reason to believe the millennium will begin on tabernacles, the seventh feast day. What uh, a coincidence. Yeah. All these things are lining up. Yep. The Bible is such a coincidence. <laughs> it's so many so coincidences. Coincidental. It's almost like okay. God has set some signs out there for us to find uh, what's what's coming and, and why what's happening and what's coming. Listen to this. This is why people think there's three years between the rapture. And the tribulation starting because between the feast and trumpets, I've done a whole sermon. Why the rapture is coming on the feast of trumpets. Okay. Which is the fifth feast day and the tribulation ending on atonement, which is the sixth. Can I tell you this between the fifth and sixth feast days? There's a period of 10 days. They're called the 10 awesome days, right? I hope you can follow me. The seventieth week of ten uh, awesome days. Yeah, ten days between the fifth and the sixth feast days. Since the seventieth week we went over in Daniel is considered to be the tribulation period. You can take out seven of those awesome days. Okay, is equal to seven years. Sure. Listen to this. Where's the other three days? Huh. There's three days between the feast unaccounted for. Because I said the rapture is the feast of trumpets, the second coming at the end of the tribulation, atonement. All right. Are you are you are you following me here? Yes. Yeah. So so the, you know, com commentator, many scholars believe that those other three years between the feast is between the time of the rapture and the beginning of the tribulation. Okay, the tribulation yeah. lasts seven of those days. Where are the other three? Many scholars believe, not all, it, it gives people the opportunity to realize what happened with the rapture Yeah. to repent. You think about that. 
Think about if we knew we had three years. If you were ever left behind, <sighs> yep. You know, I would look at it. You you could have three years before the tribulation right. starts. Right. Therefore, you could have ten years. Yep. Before Armageddon. Right. All right. Time for think about the souls that would be won though. All right. Before the the laws start to go into place right. and they start to lock it down. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's absolutely. when a, a, a tribulation evangelist would get their just traction. Yep. Is those three years you would. Are you going to be one of those? Oh. <laughs> no, I do not want to be Lord. I, you know, I do not want to be. And if, if you know what, you know, okay. There's just so complicated. There, there's a, there's a, there's a mid, uh, there, there's there's a lot of people that believe in a, a pre-trib rapture and a mid-trib rapture, and then a rapture at the very end. You got all kinds of beliefs on the rapture. Yeah. I just had a lady in our church that knows a ton that trying to convince me only one fifth of the body of Christ is going in the in rapture before the tribulation. And you know what? That that really messed with me. I went yeah. home driving. I drove home from church that day. I was kind of bugged. I was like, Lord, I, if she's right, that better not be me. Because you're going to have to really deal with with everything else. Well, I just might just become a looter. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna... Just say I didn't make it. Well, Linnea is hoping that we can stay if that's the case so we can keep doing the podcast. Yes. We, we would. We, we, we would if we... St- I would just, Obviously, Jeremiah is going to be going, so yeah, we'd have I to find do a new it John, John, you can do it. I'll ask my wife. <laughs> I don't agree with that, lady. I believe that if you believe Jesus died and rose again, you will be saved. Yes. Because that's what the Bible says. So many scholars believe that those other three years between the feast is the time uh, between the rapture and the tribulation beginning. And so not all of them. Um, so it, it gives people the opportunity uh, to repent, warn loved ones that are gone in the rapture, accept Jesus as the Messiah. Um, you know, it, all, it allows three years for the Antichrist to become prevalent, yeah. uh, start his rise of power mm-hmm. before the tribulation begins, because scholars point to the fact that we're not going to know who it is, because right now the church is a restraining force. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're not going to find out. The, the Bible is very clear. We're not going to know, all right, before the rapture, um, before the tribulation. So as, um, you know, we, that's, that's kind of where it's at. I just thought yeah. I'd throw that in there. Yeah. So, Interesting. So that if you are left behind, you think you got seven years, right? But you really got 10, maybe if you make it to the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you make it well, to the a, end. That's a, I mean. There's no guarantee on that. I mean, it's probably so I said probably if, not. If you make it, you want to go. You yeah. In the you want to go now. rapture. Yeah. You want to go in that first rapture. The catching away of of the the, the bride. Yes. Church. Yes. Yes. And and it's such a a wicked time, right? Um. Make sure it's like what we said last week that your life is right with God, right? Make sure, if you not anything else, that your life is right with God. And I know that everybody sins. No one's perfect. Fear is a sin. Worry is a sin. Doubt's a sin. Um, technically, anything that's not done out of faith is a sin, according to Romans. Anything that's not done out of faith, that means any word not spoken out of faith. Okay, you could take the, 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 the wrong route to work. Was that, did you do that out of faith? Right? I'm just saying, um, technically not obeying the laws of the land. If you don't obey the, the, the speed limit, it's a sin, right? So we could get into that, you know. Um, I, I heard a, a minister sh- say this weekend from the pulpit um, that, 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 that he hardly ever sins. And I just kind of laughed to myself. He, I guess he can think that. He can think that he hardly ever sins, okay? I just, I don't agree. I don't, I don't agree. I, I don't, I don't think if, if you really understand out of Galatians five, what all the sins are, there are so many sins, so many sins. Technically, if you're in a click, you're, you're, you're sinning, right? I can, I can throw so many things at you, uh, um, you know, 
in regards to uh, what actually is a sin if you actually did a study. And so what I'm saying is, see, these people that think they're holier than Tao, that think they're going in the rapture mm -hmm. where a lot of the body of Christ is going to be left behind yeah. because they're sinning too much. Right. Right. Well, I thought Jesus died for our sin. He absolutely did. Right. I thought he paid the penalty for our sin. Yes. I thought he was judged for our sin. Yes. Right. And so, but now what we're doing is we're saying, well, yeah, but you're going to be punished again by not going. And what was the point? By wearing a tank top, John. <laughs> you're going to be punished again for not being modest. Right. <sighs> My bad. Anyways. So. Ready for the news? Yes. Ready Cap. for the news. So John was talking about um, school boards, schools trying to impose their views. It's nice to views. hear you say something, Linnea. I said a few things during the podcast. Okay. Um, but California plans to lock up conservative parents. The Democrats, did you know they introduced a bill? It's called Senate Bill 596 back in February. And they said that they can charge a parent with a misdemeanor. See, see, they can charge somebody for speaking out against them, but you can't, uh, you can't charge someone for stealing nine hundred dollars worth of what? information. Insanity. So they can, yes, they can decide if a parent, if you show up to a school board meeting and you're opposing the school board, a teacher saying you don't agree with what they're doing in class, they can give you up to one year in jail and a fine up to a thousand dollars. It's it's the start of thought crime. It is. It's the start of you don't agree. And you have you have spoken your mind that you don't agree. But their goal you can be is they want to be able to say anything to your kids without you opposing right. what they're trying to say. This is California. This is, yeah. And I did see, I read this last week. I was reading about this, but I saw last night, Jack Hibbs, if you follow him, he showed up with a ton of people yep. to oppose this bill yeah. um, at the school board meeting. I think it was a meeting because school started. So they're trying to slide it through before it happens. Yep. But anyways, I was listening to a Charlie Kirk podcast, which I connected to this podcast. So it's in the sources section because there's so much information. I just yeah. can't explain it all. I sent it to John. You probably didn't listen to it. I, but, didn't, I didn't see that okay. one yet. But it was how charities secretly help oh, yeah. win elections. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. This is very interesting. So do you know the investigation that this guy did? He just... He kept seeing this Everybody Votes campaign, so he wanted to deep, do a deep dive into what it was, and it was a charity that was started by John Podesta. Oh. oh. John Podesta, Clinton's campaign chairman. <laughs> do you know who else started this with John Podesta? Sam Bank... Sam Banks Friedman? It's mom. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. So what they do is they open all these 501c3 charities... They get. They told everybody. Uh, so I don't know what PAC is. I guess it's like where it's a political action committee. So they sent out an email to all their PAC members, the Democrat PAC members, and said, "Hey, don't give your money to PAC this year. Give your money to." And they listed all these charities. Five hundred one three C. Yes. So they Yes. Charity. But when they give the money to these charities, what they do is they so they get money. They shut the charity down so you can't trace anything, and they just keep funneling money and money and money. So they're saying they use these funds. Use these charities as shell companies, more yes. or less, to yes. keep funneling funds. Into the Democratic to, Party campaigns. Yeah. That is how they're winning elections because they are, I guess, illegally, legally, illegally. It's apparently illegal what they're doing right. to support all these Democratic campaigns. That's why I think it was, I can't remember who, oh, um, the lady, Tudor Dixon. In yeah. Michigan, yeah. everybody thought she was going to win, but she came back and she's like, I lost because of campaign money. Yep. All of a sudden, they came up with all this money at the end. Where do you think they got it from? Yep. John Podesta. And if you don't know who he is, he's, an, abs yeah. uh, he's an absolute he pervert. He is. Blood he drinker. Is, yes. Absolutely. Horrible. And I don't say that sarcastically. No. No. Okay. I don't either. Um. So anyways, we listened to that podcast because it was very eye-opening. And actually, Charlie Kirk, because Jim was talking about how they're trying to break the will of the people. Yes. And he makes a really good statement of, because people are like, how can you keep going, Charlie? Doesn't it bother you that it feels like they keep winning? And he's like, I'm not here to do anything but tell the truth. And I'll right. never stop right. exposing and telling the truth. Like, yep. no matter what happens, they're everybody plays by dirty rules, yep. but I'm just going to keep bringing the truth. So yeah. I, anyways, the whole no podcast who's was, in political power. Yes. For sure. Yes. It's, 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 it's more, what Charlie Kirk is saying is more about 
it's more than it's more about uh, it's more than being about winning an election. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. It goes way past that at this point. Yes. And so, but, um, but the whole as, podcast on just the money yeah. and how they funnel it and what they're doing is yeah. mind blowing. From a, I a to local, it twice. from a local level here. So there's a there's a, a big vote uh, about moving forward with some of the trans policies uh, with uh, Osseo School District. That that vote is going this coming Tuesday. So it's it's oh. obviously going to be a big important thing for. Uh, ISD 279 here in Minnesota. Um, but that's the same thing is it, it seems insurmountable and it seems like you're not being represented. Um, but you have to keep up, you have to uh, keep showing up. You have to keep making your voice heard. Uh, because if you don't, it is almost like permission for yep. the enemies, uh, to get, get their way. And it, you have to make your voice heard, and it's it's hard um, as the as the people who don't want to impose your will or your opinion or your beliefs on other people. The problem is if you don't make it heard and keep things fair, the other side is going to. They don't care if you they impose their opinion and their view on you. So you have to be there. You have to show up. You have to be heard and with love, completely in love, but you have to stand. If you don't stand, your right. your side will fall. Yeah, and Gavin Newsom is a dictator. Yeah. yeah. Basically, that's what what he's doing. Like mm -hmm. if if you oppose them, you can be jailed. Yeah. If you oppose, it's, it's insane. Well, right. yeah, and they're yeah, and they're a sanctuary state for transgender. So is Minnesota. And I'm going to say, I was just talking to a good friend the other day, and they work at a hospital. I'm not going to say which one. And they said the amount of um, child surgeries that they've been doing on children is mind blowing. And this this guy uh, who's doing the surgery, he's like, it's fine if you want to be gay and you choose your side. But he's like, when we start manipulating children, he said it's pure evil. Yeah. He's one of the doctors yeah, who was like in charge of it. And he's like, I'm to the point where I don't want to do it anymore because it is absolutely. Well, then don't. I don't think he, I mean, he's not a Christian and he's oh. doesn't align with all the same beliefs we do, but he's all of a sudden like, what are we doing here yeah. to these children? Yeah. It's I'm going to start to say something. So anyways, um, well, we, good for him. Yes. After we, how many children did he change personally? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But, um, we talked about Hawaii and mm -hmm. last week yep. and we were going to bring some more information. I have a little bit more information. This was from, um, it's called intercessors for prayer in America. This lady lives in Hawaii and I was just reading it the other day while I was getting ready. And she just said, there's a lot of conjecture regarding how the fire got, um, destroyed Lehana. She said, there's a lot of ins insufficient evidence to draw exact conclusions as to what happened. Mm -hmm. But she warned that there was, or she said, there was little warning and limited means of escape. And I was reading this morning that they shut down the one road yeah. out of Lahana. Main, Main Street, uh, Lahaina was totally blocked by a police officer. By person. a police officer telling people to turn around. Well, and they, they couldn't. Because they're trapped. No. They were trapped. They, they trapped, and these people died in their cars. This one guy yep. said he went around the barricade and was like, I'm not staying here. Yep. They tried to say there was an electrical fire on the road, but there was a fire coming. from. So they were getting fires from both ends. A lot of speculation on what happened here. Also, I don't know what this has to do with anything. I, obviously something. But the police chief didn't mm -hmm. send out, like, there should have been a warning. Yep. Everybody should have been alerted. Yep. But what they did was... There was kids at school, kids at daycare. Yep. They sent the kids home. So there's a thousand people missing still there's that they can't find. Almost two thousand. Okay, almost two thousand. Yep. They say half of that, if not more, is children. Yeah. Oh, and the and the they kids won't are talk about it. There's they there's won't. people that have tried to get the governor and the governor or the the mayor of Lahaina, or is it? I I don't know if he's the mayor of Lahaina or the you know. Um, Maui overall, uh, but he won't answer. No, questions. they won't answer they, why they, they didn't alert the I residents. I wonder where they are. Yeah, I wonder where it's, those it's kids crazy. are. I don't know. It's the, sad to think that they... there are bodies washing up on other islands there in Hawaii that you know they they died. Yeah, no, they have not been counted. Um, it is no. it is heartbreaking 
what has happened um, and how much has not gotten out. The the information is not being allowed out. And, no, uh, they have, the, there's control the, in I it. I seriously Media doubt those kids' bodies are floating up on other islands. No, no I don't. Are. I don't think so either. So no. what? What? What you got? Where are we at? Yeah, or um, I'm going to say that they are restricting access to the island. So they're saying yeah. the the people are saying there's unnecessary restrictions of access to people's homes, businesses, and infrastructures. They separated families, which we talked about the children. There is frustration for that. So the residents were asking for help. They got mad with people coming in, trying to bring them help. But they just said there's a lot of suspicion, a lot of scrutiny around what's happening. And people are afraid to leave the island to go somewhere to get help for, let's say they got burned in the fire. They don't want to leave because they said they won't let them back in. And then their family's there. So they're just saying there's a lot of weird activity going on around about that. But we'll see. We'll keep watching and Interestingly, the police chief uh, yeah, in, in uh, Lahaina is, was the police chief at the Las Vegas mass shooting about yeah. five years ago. Right. That's Which is- very interesting that he would all of a sudden there's – there's actually a law in Lahaina that the uh, police chief has to be established there for a year. Mm. Somehow, this guy they, came in and- they struck that rule down to let him in. And then gave him fifty thousand dollar raise oh. uh, within three months of, of taking that office. Interesting. So interesting. there's there's some interesting things to become the next AI city, yeah, yeah. and right. to become right. the next smart city uh, of America. Yes. Yeah, but we we talked a little bit about COVID coming back. Yeah, um, they're coming out this strain, Eris, and the government has supposedly been buying COVID supplies secretly for the last couple months. Shocking. And I mean, I know we said that there's, I, I read about some colleges mandating masks, some colleges, this one college is already making people stay in their dorms and do yeah. online classes. Mm-hmm. John talked about what Eris meant. So I guess well, we don't need to go back to that. On, so I, I send Linnea TikToks all the time and, and Instagram posts, uh, you know, social media things. I'm seeing, I'm seeing people uh, starting to to say like, "Hey, where are you guys? Are you guys continuing to mask up?" They're basically shills for people to be social yeah. distance and and masked up, and because there's nothing actually happening in the news, so it's like a ground uh, groundswell of yeah. people talking about it. And we, we've talked about uh, how uh, different parties will pay influencers to spout whatever they yes. want to on yes. social media. And I'm seeing that happen about COVID again right now on social media. So they're they're trying to prep the way. They're trying to to prep people in a very subverted way right. uh, to be ready to accept those impositions. You have to not live in fear. You have right. to make sure that you uh, you have a spine. To be honest, That's- I wonder if this is the same virus they that they found that they were making in Boston. Remember that oh. we reported that. Remember yeah. that yeah. they were they were, they were concocting a uh, in a lab in also, Boston. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wonder there if was this also came from Boston. There was also a Chinese oh, okay. uh, lab in uh, I believe it's British Columbia, mm. um, and it may have been. Well, there was there. a lab in California that yep. they had yep. to shut down because it was a bunch of, it was a, well, right. it was a Chinese lab in right. California. California. Well, they know it's coming and they're warning us it's coming. Okay. Yeah. Without, yeah. UK, without any UK proof. Is it's all talk. It's all masks. talk. Yeah. yeah it's, but they're they, telling us it's coming yeah, exactly. and they're already shutting things down. They're so just preempting, be they're ready. getting you warmed up we'll to see. be able to go through some sort of shutdown or some sort of lockdown. And we'll see if Daniel's right. We'll see, right. Daniel, if we, we wind up in digital currency That's or it. half the world. So I thought you had more, though. There was something you left out, well, 19 it's... cases or something. What was that? What? I no, that was flood, that Biden opened up the um, floodgates <laughs> in Arizona. So there was like a stopper in the water that would stop the river from like flowing. Like a dam? Yes. In the wall. The wa- in the wall. Mexico in the middle of the wall. And he opened it up, and you have a, you had fourteen hundred immigrants enter in through that. So they're coming in through this gate daily, wide from open, where he opened that up. Open the gates, come on through. But we know that that's they've done that the whole. It's um, not a new thing. Yeah. No, and France. It's just there's more now since they opened these gates. Okay, 
Yeah, there's so many. What you about guys, France? France is mandating biometrics and facial recognition database at certain border crossings, huh. desensitizing people wow. to entry and exit systems I within the be, European or European Union. I would not be surprised if there are riots and protests in, in France about that. Yeah, 544 well, kiosks well, there have with been 250 non, tablets. Non-stop. France has never, France in has, essence, stopped protesting. They are, They're hiding that from you, yeah, by the yeah. way. They're not you won't gonna, see it on the news. No, not on CNN. But watch Macron. Um, the, the, Macron. I just wonder. You have to wonder about him you because he's ahead of it, him. right? Yep. You can trust he, Jacques, Jacques Macron. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, a, he, he's ahead of it. I'm talking about a candidate. Right, because mm-hmm. well, he's he's slated to be the next uh, head of the UN. Yeah, right? he is. Yes. Yeah. And so, anyways, joke. Um, what a joke! You you have to. Uh, I got it. You have to. If anything, remain um, vigilant. Very vigilant in your heart. All right, remain vigilant in your heart. Keep your connection with God. Uh, you you were born into this time for yes. a reason. Yeah. Right. For a reason. Yep. And so um, this does not have to be a time of fear. It does yes. not have to be a time of fear. And, and there, there, there are, there's scripture after scripture in the Bible that says, different fear shall not come near me. Fear shall not come near me. Wow. Could you imagine living like that where fear doesn't come near you? It doesn't even come near you, regardless of what it looks like. You know, and so... Um, There's scriptures, there's one I was saying last night, um, not that I uh, speak in respect of want, the Apostle Paul, but um, not that I speak in respect of want, but I have learned in whatsoever state that I am to be content. And if he's sad, mad, angry, whatever he is, he's still content, contentment. Because discontent, discontent, uh, leads to, um, and in essence, it pulls you away from God. You, I'm not saying it's illegal, but you, you have to address that discontent, right? If you, it, and, and that's why I keep saying about your relationship with the Lord. That's the only thing that, that, that in this day and age, it's the only contentment you're going to get. You're, in the end, a person isn't going to make you content, right? Your husband, that's a lot of pressure to put on your husband and your wife, for your contentment. Yeah. Right. Yep. Cause that's impossible for them. In the end, the only one that's going to make you content is the Lord, the father, the father in heaven. And so with that, thank you so much for tuning in to the final hour podcast. We'll see you again next week. Maybe just sleeveless shirts next week instead of tank tops. God bless you.